Sure. Uh, hi everyone. So today I'll be sharing about CSS code splitting. So before I begin, um, let me introduce myself first. So I'm a front end developer at Shopee. Um, I guess don't have to explain that much about this. So I guess uh, this is our first time Shopee like um, sharing uh, someone from Shopee sharing about CSS. So maybe let me give you guys like a bit of background on how we use CSS in our daily web development. So what we use is we use CSS, uh, CSS modules basically, and then we uh, use Webpack to bundle all of them into one CSS files, and then we serve that to use the user. So what is a, what is CSS? So basically, what you see right on the left is um, you write in CSS. So CSS is an extension of CSS that allows us to write functions and mix scenes so that we can reuse common CSS tricks or patterns easily throughout our code base. So, uh, so as you can see here, we like you can call like include and and extend and stuff like that, and then you will generate a CSS file from it. And besides that, we use CSS modules. So long ago, we when we were small, we used uh, BAM, which is Block Element Modifier, to name our class names. But as our application grew complex, we have a, a, a lot of people are working on the code base, and um, and 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 it gets complicated. It's very tough to figure out. Things. Like imagine home page, uh, sales section, item cart, and then the price. And, and the, the names gets longer and longer. So we, we decided to use CSS modules because that's free us from like wrecking our brain to think a uh, unique class names for every element that we want to style. So we just need to make sure that when you have one CSS files, and, or we, we call it a CSS modules like JavaScript modules, we make sure that all the class names declared in it is unique. And then with our build tool, with some plugins, it will generate class names that is unique throughout the application. So we don't have to think how to write the class names. So as you can see here, right, uh, you, you, you write local and uh, class names called button. And then when you compile, it just turns out to be some gibberish uh, uh, identifier. And how you import it is you, you get, when you import the CSS files, you get the mapping of like what's before and after, and then you will figure them out by itself. So with the two tools for us that helps us to write CSS, and then we just use Webpack with uh, some plugins, that will bundle everything together and extract all our codes into one CSS files. And because that helps us, um, and that saves a lot of, um, okay, so we, we, write CS, uh, we write one CSS files for every component we have, right? So if you want to, uh, when you download all of them, like we have so many components and download all of them takes time, like a lot of round trip. So we, we use extract text webpack plugin. It's just a web plugin that we just plug in and it will extract everything into one CSS files. So it save a lot of round trip time. So that's basically sums up everything. So, uh, okay, how big is Shopee? So if you ask someone from a uh, business background, they will like show you numbers, right? But then if you ask developers, how big is Shopee? How big? So it's like in our repo, for last counted, like a, a week ago when I prepared this slide, uh, we, we have like a thousand of CSS files and more than like 60 over lines of CSS codes. That's a lot. and and the number is growing, like everyone is like writing a lot of code every day. And in total, if you get everything into one file, it's uh, 500 kilobytes. So I'm not sure like you guys have an idea like how big 500 kilobyte is, um, like how much is it? So uh, it's, it's roughly just one minute of MP3 files. So with 4G network, it's, uh, you just download this within a 10 of a second, like immediately. But then if 3G, it's like one, two seconds, like one, two, and then the file is done. 
So, but then, so, but who else use at 3G right now, right? Like Singapore is like 4G and everything is fast. But then because Shopee is uh, serving Southeast Asia countries and there's a, like, besides major cities, most of them actually using 3G networks. So download speed is, um, if, like the internet speed is sort of slow. So this is kind of a bottleneck of like downloading like all this into the browser. But then is the download speed, like is it just because of download speed that we need to slim down our CSS files? Uh, well, um, have you guys like seen this from, so, so I'm, I'm more of a Chrome guy than a Firefox. So, so I use like Chrome DevTools a lot. So like have anyone of you like seen this, uh, like this DevTools? Or, or maybe I can like show you like how to turn, turn it on. So basically you like you go to one website and you click, we'll wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you, you go somewhere and you click inspect element. Oh, let me, whoops. Okay. So there's a performance tab. So what performance tab is that you can see the timeline on like how a page is loading. So if you see here, it's like showing you like uh, what's going on when the browser is trying to fetch all your files. There's a lot of timelines with like, oh wait, not this one, like networks, like what files are they downloading and stuff like that, right? And then you can choose to set a uh, different network speeds and CPU throttling, like slowing down the CPU to simulate how maybe a poorer mobile device is like uh, CPU's power. So, so you see here, right? Uh, this is like a net timeline of like what files being downloaded. And it's, uh, it's recorded with um, slow 3G network and uh, six times slowdown of the CPU speed. And if you see here at the purple, it's the 500 kilobyte of CSS files. So it takes four seconds to actually download and parse. So like two seconds, like one, two to download and then one, two to parse it. So what's parsing? So if you study like browser, how browser loads a CSS files, uh, this is like a typical uh, critical, it's, it's part of a critical rendering path of a browser. So when browser downloads your page, it sees a link tag and then says, oh, I need to fetch this CSS. And then the browser goes to fetch CSS. So when the CSS files downloaded, the browser will start to read the CSS files, like uh, parse it, so, we, so to say, to read it and understand it based on some syntax grammar. And if your CSS files is like syntax error, it will just stop there. But after that, with all the understanding of like after reading through the entire CSS files, uh, the browser will build a CSS OM, a CSS object model, just like a DOM, documented object model. So with this, and then you will, uh, you will, like, so browser will take time to read and then uh, build a CSS object model. And then with that, you will start to use this with your DOM and then try to apply layouts onto your, onto your HTML. So if your file is big, it takes longer time to download. And then after download, it takes longer to read through the entire file to parse it. And then if your CSS styles are complex, it will take longer to actually like find out what's the actual styles that you need and then apply it to the HTML, right? So um, is that just it? So apparently not. So after I, there's another tool, so let me show you, which is called, uh, you have to access it this way, where you go to more tools, somehow it's hidden here, and then it's um, called coverage. So what coverage does is that it will, it will tell you, well, it will tell you like, um, for, for a file of like JavaScript or CSS, how much of it is being used right now at this moment for like rendering this thing on your on your screen right so if you see uh 
right now we have this file downloaded and actually like um, actually we are using what 60% of it right and then it also tells you like which part of the code is being used which part is being not being used so whoa so apparently according to this uh, snap, uh, screenshot is that 92% of that 500 kilobytes is not being used at all on the home page so wow it's like you spend so much time to download your file and then you parse it and then actually 92% of it is not being used at all that's a very waste of uh, resource and network so let me do a summary of uh, why such a big CSS files we had was a problem to us so firstly well, wait, yeah firstly it just takes too long to load because the files is big depends on network speed it will take longer and big and it will take time to parse the CSS code depends on your uh, CPU power it might be faster or be slower and worse still after all these things you have a lot of unused CSS it's just like what the hell asked me to do all these things and you're not using them right so so how should we solve this problem so it turns out that it's not a CSS specific problems it's a front-end specific problems like we had this problem before and we solve it for JavaScript like our JavaScript files was way bigger than CSS and we had this problem before and we know how to solve it which is code splitting so the concept of code splitting is that you split the code into separate JavaScript files separate bundles to say and you dynamically load them when you actually need the bundle so there's like a few ways of doing that one is that you split based on routes which means that you are visiting home page you don't have to load content from like checkout page or product page right or when you visit so you split them based on routes so uh, so when you are at different URL you don't have to load codes from other URLs and secondly we can also do it by splitting by sections meaning your page is like a very long page like mobile your screen is so small right and there's a lot of sections below that off the screen that's not being seen you don't have to load code for them right it's only when you scroll then you load the information so that's that's code splitting you don't need to load code that is not being used at the moment so what you see here in the screen is um, when you see the import statement it's called a uh, dynamic import which uh, our build tool uh, webpack allows uh, allows us to write this kind of syntax like to hint them to tell them like okay now with this import anything that you are imp requiring is going to be on it's going to build to a separate file a separate bundle it's not included in this uh, main bundle so we can do this to CS, uh, JavaScript and actually we can do it the same for CSS so so uh, remember just now I mentioned we use extract text plugin to extract everything all the CSS we have and then make it to one CSS files yeah so nothing we, we check the, uh, all the options that we can uh, play with it but there's nothing much we can do from that but then uh, recently we uh, there's a new version of webpack uh, we upgraded our webpack to 4 version 4 and when we look at this uh, webpack plugin it tells us that there's a new version of this plugin so you should use the new mini CSS extract plugin so we just follow the the guidelines just install and do everything so if you are expecting me to tell you like is there any special magic that we do to do the code splitting actually not really we, we just follow the guides so we copied what was uh, being what was being uh, we copied the example basically and tuned to our needs from from the uh, readme and that's it basically so so what's so different about this new plugin and the versus the old one is that the new plugins allow uh, is smarter that it generates one CSS files per one JavaScript files previously uh, it will just 
extract everything to one CSS files, but this plugin is slightly smarter, so we will just swap the plugin and it just worked for us. So let me show you the results of this. Uh, so now if you look at look back at the CSS, it takes like uh, 20 milliseconds to download. It's like even with the same slow 3G network and six times slowdown of CPU. And if you look at the code coverage, uh, it's much uh, although there's a lot, there's still some unused CSS, but basically the the file is smaller right now. So that there, there, there's there's always some unused CSS because there's some actions or special edge cases in your element that that wasn't being shown at the moment or due to con some condition like pop-up is not showing so it's not using those styles right but basically it's yeah it's good so yay so all is well <laughs> until until after that until we re receive our first bug so it's not just like that and it works and we are so happy but we just got bug so the first bug we have is some styles were broken when the user goes to like this particular page from another page right so from page x to page y oh some styles in page y was broken and the weird thing is if you just directly goes to page y everything looks nice it's just that it's broken when user goes from page x to page y it just only works this way it, when you go that it, it on the other way it doesn't it's like it's it's weird that we never encountered this kind of scenario ever before when we were like why is it so like let me give you guys like a quick quiz or something so uh like look at this html right here you have two style sheets and applying class to full with uh the first one is uh, color green second one is blue so does anyone knows what's the color of like the hello world uh, anyone says green uh, blue okay wow yes you're right it's blue <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah I, I guess you guys know right because the in the head in the header uh, page two styles comes after page one so because okay, because the specificity is the same, right? So orders matter. So when you look at the head, page two comes after page one. So it's page two will be applied and it's blue. So yeah. So we go from like page one to page two. We look at the head and we see it's page one and then page two. But then if you go the other way, oh wait, no, not this one. But if you go the other way around from page 2 to page 1 when you look at the head element it's actually page 2 first and then page 1 and then then you will become green right because it's the the order is different right now so 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 why is this happening to us why so so if okay so we, we go under the hood of uh, ext the mini css extract plugin and how it does so uh, you don't don't get scared by all this JavaScript code. Okay, what you need to know is that when you import styles right down there, when you import the pl the plugin itself will transform to something similar to like ensure this CSS files exist in our application. And what that ensure does is that it will go through the head and see whether this CSS files being downloaded. If it's being downloaded, okay, it's all good. If it's not, you just append a link tag on the on the head element, and that's it. Okay, so so that's the reason why the 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 tags are uh, the the order of the link tag is different. Yeah, it's all because of that. Because when you go from page one, you make sure that a uh, page one style is there. And then you go to page two, make sure page two style is there. So you put page two after page one. But if you navigate in a different order, page two first, and then page one, then the order of the of the link tag on the head element is different, right? And then turns from blue to green. So 
after knowing this, the only solution that we can come we come up with is to to add specificity to to make our CSS uh, target to be more specific. Okay, so question number two. So can anyone tell me like what uh, color will the hello world be right now? Like you have class A, class B. Uh, B is green, A is blue. But then your in the class names you in the style sheet just you rotate uh, the other way around. So anyone says green? Anyone says blue? Oh, yes. That's <laughs> so so you guys know right? Uh, the the class in the the classes in the class attribute doesn't matter. It it uh, it's only the orders that matter. So welcome to part of the problem that we encounter. Uh, similar to similar to the so sometimes it's not just because of this uh, like uh, like sometimes it's it's not so straightforward that we just apply a class element to make it more specific some sometimes it happens in a very weird way which is so we have this uh, react component so uh, if you guys not don't know about react it's okay let me explain it in a very simple way which is uh, this component takes in a class name and then you apply it to the div. Oh, wait, let me go for my mouse. Yeah, so it's a component, takes in a class name so that you apply, you add the class name with the default class name. So, so like providing you a way to override the styles and that's it. And then local, uh, in this component, you use CSS modules that uh, apply a, class, uh, a style to this component. So what happened when this code being bundled by Webpack, like after some Webpack magic, is that it will ensure that these files, and then you will get the name, the actual uh, class names of uh, being transformed, and then you will just apply here. So meaning when you write something like this, a uh, class name, like you create this component, custom component with a uh, class B, for example, what you get is this this code. So this is the CSS modules, the the one that's being used internally, and this one is the one that's supposedly to uh, modify the class of this component. And yet again, we have the same problem uh, because they are written in different files. They could be coming from different files, and because they are all specify just one class name, so the specific CSS specificity is the same. It's just one at the class name. So all those matters right now again. So sometimes it's uh, the you, you see green, sometimes you see blue, right? So and and what makes the matter more complicated is that right now at this point we because this class name is like sort of generated by the by our build tool. We don't even know how to like override this. Like if if it's a normal class name, we just like write dot uh, c eight e four four three six e dot class b, and then you have like higher specificity, right? But right now we don't know how to override it, and we we like search online and we we found a secret secret dirty hack, which is to do class b dot class b. So this, <laughs> uh, yeah, we we don't encourage. But this it, like increases the class specificity and it it applies like overrides the color to green. Okay, so yeah, black magic. So problem two uh, is a very specific problem. I won't cover much on it because it's related to something we do. Uh, it's more on a JavaScript side. It's not really CSS related. It's what it's called a server side rendering. So we, we do serve, uh, we use some node servers to uh, render our application and then serve it to the users. And when we switch to uh, code, uh, CSS code splitting, it just, uh, we, we change the plugin and then it just breaks our server side rendering code. Uh, a short story is that because if you remember this code where we say like ensure CSS, it's using a lot of browser uh, API like document.create element name and stuff like that, which doesn't exist in the server. So that's why it's, it's breaking. 
and yeah, we 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 had our way to work around this. And uh, if you encounter similar problems, um, feel free to uh, come to talk to me afterwards if you like. Yeah, basically, that's it. Thank you.